food. Thumbs up. Yep. Lol. Okay. Um, I learned what monads are a couple of weeks ago, and when you learn what monads are, you have to write a monad tutorial. Um, <laughs> it's the dumb thing. Um, but I'm going to disavow you of some fallacies that were introduced in other monad tutorials. <laughs> right? That's so, also tradition. Yeah. <laughs> so, this may seem obvious, but a monad is not a burrito, nor is it a writing desk, nor is it a space suit. A monad is not a muppet or a semicolon. Sorry, Morton. <laughs> right? So if it's not all these things, what is it? It's just a monoid in the category of endofunctors. So, what's the problem? Uh, seriously though, uh, a monad is just an instance of monad, right? Like, oh, no, you move, because we're recording. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. I didn't think that through. Uh, an instance like, like, like with classes and shit like you're familiar with, right? So, right, that's a class. Maybe you use one of these languages. Monad is just a class. It's not like this super abstract concept. Some of the functions on the class are maybe more abstract than we're used to, but only by like one step up. Uh, so I'm gonna be using Clojure for this presentation. Um, Clojure is a lisp. Oh, that coloring isn't showing up. Well, oh, whatever. Uh, which means that so if for anyone that's not used to reading Lisp, right, you take a function call and you move one of the parentheses to the other side of the verb. Okay? So that's all you need to change. <laughs> yeah. And for the Haskellers out there, you take all of your bullshit fixity stuff and you throw it in the bin. Because that's retarded. Uh, so Mernod is a class who gives a shit, uh, I'm going to introduce problems uh, that monads can solve. And hopefully problems that are kind of sensible, like these are certainly problems that I've hit. So I'm going to begin with nil, right? Uh, for those of you that don't know, the, the guy that invented nil put it into his language, not because it needed it, right? But because it kind of looked complete, right? It, there was a way of expressing the implementation of nil that was like really easy to do, so he threw it in as like a bonus feature, and it's cost the world like a billion dollars in type errors. Uh, or every day. Yeah, yeah, every day. So um, that, like he regrets that. Um, so this, this I do, right? Uh, foo bar baz. If foo or bar return nil, then we get uh, this, right? In Ruby at least. Um, because uh, bar and baz, Neither are defined on nil. Uh, so that sucks, right? So, um, <clears throat> Fubabaz is a terrible example. I have a better one the breeder example. Um, this is like a dog breeder, right? <clears throat> so, Colleen is my mom. She has a pet called Ebony, who is my dog. Ebony has a mother called, I'm pretending, Fluffy. And Fluffy has an owner called Sarah. Sarah is the breeder, right? So Sarah owns dogs, puts them together, more dogs come out. It's like, if you're from the Java world, it's, it's like a dog factory. Uh, where dogs are beans. Uh, so here, uh, we're going to navigate from Colleen to Sarah, like the word Sarah. Uh, and you can imagine that like a, you know, a chain like Fubabaz. Um, so here's the data enclosure. Um, can people read that? The, the squiggly brackets are uh, map or hash if you're from the Ruby world, or dictionary if you're from like ASP Classic. <laughs> Python. Python? Really? Okay, okay, cool. Is it like an A list? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about a real list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to start out with Colleen, which is like the whole object, not the string Colleen. Uh, and then we're going to be going pet, we'll get Ebony, mother will get Fluffy, owner will get Sarah. Uh, so this is our first example. Uh, and this should work fine, right? Because everything's there. 
Except for Richard, he's got no pets. He like cries himself to sleep at night because no one loves him. Uh, this is the data for Richard, which is uh, easy, right? Um, cool. So how do we start out? Uh, let's do it the way I guess I would normally do it. Um, and for those of you that are impressed, I copied the I from Wikipedia. You can do the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, here we go, right? Uh, get breeder name. This is like a one-liner. Uh, and and uh, so we're going to introduce like an advanced topic to fix a one line of code. Uh, so here, uh, pet owner. Uh, Maps enclosure are functions, so the argument here to the function is pet, and then that returns a map, and the argument to that is mother. So it's, it's kind of like, imagine like a square bracket lookup in Ruby or whatever, kind of like array dereferencing. The thing's on the right hand side, it doesn't matter. So if we call this with Colleen, we get Sarah, all good. If we call this with Richard, we get a null pointer exception. Uh, so that's great. That's, uh, yeah, we want that happening in production. <laughs> so, um, no, actually, that sucks. So let's do it uh, making it return nil, right? So we'll start out. Uh, we're going to get passed to our nil friendly version, a pet owner. We check whether that pet owner is nil, right? So is Colleen nil? If she is, we're just going to return nil. We're going to, not going to do anything else. That's like, that's it. Cool? So neither of my examples would return nil at this point because they're both maps. Then we're going to drill in one step and try and find the pet. So for Colleen, this is going to return ebony. For Richard, this is going to return nil. And for Richard, this is where we stop. So our function is now terminated. The result is nil. For Colleen, we're going to keep going. So we've got the pet, we're going to dive into the pet, find the pet's mother. This is going to return Fluffy. And from the mother, we're going to get to the owner, which is Sarah. <coughs> and then finally, we don't need to check for nil of the owner, uh, because if the owner... Sorry, we have checked for nil for the owner. We don't need to check for nil for the name of the owner. Because if it's nil, we just return nil anyway. Yeah? So, nod or like chew loudly if you understand. Yeah? Cool. It's obvious now. Uh, so, this is how it behaves, right? Uh, this is kind of the same as before, um, except instead of blowing up with Richard, we instead return nil, which is desirable. So, this is the two compared, right? So, down the bottom, old, up the top, new. New behaves good, but um, that code that sucked. Um, uh, and and honestly, I think that's kind of what I would do. Like, if I was programming in a in a normal language that wasn't awesome, I would I would write that, and it would. Or or maybe if I was in Python, I'd like I'd just do the chain and then catch the exception and return nil. But either way, it, it kind of sucks, right? Uh, so let's get to the essence of the problem, which, you know, the essence, it sounds a bit hand-wavy, it kind of sounds like a fragrance by Chanel. Um, I mean, it is. <laughs> uh, cool, so I think this function defines the, the essence of our problem, right? We have some chain of stuff to do, but we don't want to do that chain of stuff if the value <coughs> passed in is nil, right? So we check whether the value is nil, and if it is, oh, sorry, we check if the value is nil, and if it is, we return nil. Otherwise, we execute the rest of the stuff passing in the value. Is everyone good with this? Yeah? Good. Awesome. So when we pass in <coughs> nil, right, in this example, our function would return cold if it was cold. Uh, when we pass in nil, we get nil. When we pass in a value, say one, we get cold. Cool. Uh, and we could pass in, you know, false or whatever here because we're explicitly checking for nil. So let's use this and rewrite our old sucky version to be a little more uh, 
explicit what we're doing, a little less kind of ad hoc. So I'm going to start out. Uh, this code has gaps in it because code's going to come in the middle. Uh, you're going to see that a bit through this presentation. I, hopefully it's more helpful than annoying. Uh, cool. So here we are past the pet owner. And the pet owner here is going to be passed in as the second argument to call on less nil. Right? So if pet owner is nil, then we're done. We return nil, we stop. Uh, if pet owner is not nil, it will be passed into this function as the owner argument. Cool? So anything inside that function can refer to pet owner safely knowing that it's not going to be nil and it can refer to it as owner. Sweet. So, the next step down, we're going to drill into the owner and get the pet. Not like literally drill. <laughs> Uh, That's so not really works, dude. <laughs> <laughs> not with the owner. Uh, so this is the same thing. Right? trust in Wikipedia. <laughs> we <laughs> we pass the pet if we have it into the function. If not, we return nil. Inside the function, you can trust it, uh, and on and on until we get into the middle, where we don't need to because. If it returns nil, it'll just return nil anyway. So the innermost part of this, we're just asking for the name of the owner. So uh, if we pass in Colleen, we get Sarah, of course. And if we pass in Richard, we get the good behavior that we want, which is returning nil. So this solution <coughs> is maybe actually longer than the last one. Um, but it it's more specific to the problem that we're solving. Um, so you can look at this code and you can see straight away what, what it's doing, like, immediately. You don't need to kind of uh, look at the code and guess what the pattern here is. Um, so I think, uh, even though it's less to us, uh, or more verbose if we're avoiding <coughs> double negatives, uh, I, I kind of prefer this. Um, and we could go further, right? Uh, Closure's a great language. We could compress this back down to one line. But I'm going to stop here because I'm going to introduce a new problem, lists. Uh, and the solution to these two problems is going to be similar. And from those similarities, we're going to drive a solution to both that rocks. Cool? So we've gone from uh, traversing a bunch of things that could be nil to now we're going to traverse down a bunch of things that at every point return lists. Uh, so I've had this problem before, and every time I got to the next point down, I thought to myself, oh my god, not another list. Uh, so the data here is like this, right? Uh, Colin is a broker. Uh, Colin has potentially multiple clients. In this example, he's just going to have Fred. Uh, Fred will have multiple types of investment, so shares in gold. And his investments can be in multiple markets, right? So he's got some shares in Japan, some in America, and then each market will only have one value associated with it. <coughs> cool. So it's like uh, <coughs> single value, list, 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 single value. Cool. Um, so hopefully this is kind of a problem people have hit, if not, lucky you. Uh, so this enclosure looks like that, uh, which I think is pretty readable, right? It's just the same stuff. Yeah. It's just the end one was fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so square brackets are the vector construct of closure, right? Just think of what it The square brackets yeah. is the <laughs> end of a vector. Yeah. 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 Um, so they're like, so lists, they don't need to quote. Yeah, so this, the end of this line here is like the equivalent of Python's double underscore. Um, it sucks, but whatever. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a convention. But it's it's very, some magic symbol. Oh, sorry, Courtney. 
I guess something simple like the Batman scene where it just closes everything that's open at the top, like, to the top level. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's good. Submit a patch. <laughs> It'll definitely be the Batman symbol. <laughs> Is there a Unicode Batman? Mm. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, uh, how do we traverse this list, right? How do we get from Colin? Oh, the problem, right? Yeah. We want to find out how much money Colin is managing, right? So, to do that, we need to get to the balances, which are the, at the other end of a bunch of lists, right? <clears throat> so, to get from Colin to the balances, we start by finding Colin's clients, which is Colin's a value, but Colin's clients will return a list. <clears throat> and then, this part may not seem uh, immediately obvious, but we're going to mapcat. So mapcat is the equivalent of uh, flat map in Haskell uh, or Scala. And it's called it's flat map in Ruby as well. It's concat map in Haskell. Concat map, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> flat map in, in good languages. Uh, so, so the way mapcat works, right, is it's, it's like map. Uh, so it will run a function on each value in a list or a sequence. Uh, and then it will construct a new list out of the results from that function. So that's how map works. Mapcat expects the function at every point to return a list. Cool? So if we ran this through map, we would get back a list of lists with values. Uh, and in this case, that's not what we want. We just want a list of values. So without like the double nesting. Cool. So uh, mapcat will concatenate each of those inner lists together to form one list that's flat. So out of this we will get all of the investment types for all of the clients that Colin has. And then we'll get all of the markets for all the investment types for all of the clients that Colin has. And then finally we're going to map over all of those to get the values. We're not going to map cap because value <laughs> just returns a number. It doesn't return a list. Cool? So this is this is like genuinely how I would write it. Uh, this is basically how I have written it when some I yo. hit this problem. Okay? Some yo. I mean, with some. Yeah. Sure, with a some. But like, whatever. Uh, Okay, cool. So, uh, for the data that I showed you that you've probably forgotten, this will return 7,000, uh, some 8s and some 3s. Um, so, that, that's like got us the data that we want. We can then sum it up, as Alex pointed out. I'm Andy. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> <laughs> you named him wrong. You should be Alex. Uh, you're his dad, right? Yeah, okay. Just continue the thought. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this, this looks kind of familiar to me, right? Uh, in this case, where we've got higher order functions and we're calling it over all of the data at every step uh, and then passing that into another higher order function and so on. Uh, so let's compare the old with the new. In the old one, our <laughs> higher order function was colon less nil. Uh, in the new one, it's map cap, except where it's not. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. So that, that kind of screwed everything else up, uh, everything up for us. Uh, so what we need to do um, to make me not look like an idiot is wrap the inner in a list, right? <laughs> so instead of just calling value on market, instead we're creating a lambda and wrapping <laughs> the value in a list. Easy? Cool. Uh, and then and then we actually do have map cat all the way down and colon less nil all the way down. Um, the so now we we're like wrapping the inner of map cat in a list, but we're not wrapping the inner of nil in anything. That's fine, we'll just treat it as like identity, right? because uh, it, it doesn't need any wrapping. <coughs> so we've hit common ground, I think. Uh, and now that we've got like two concrete examples with common ground. Let's create an abstraction. Uh, so what, what, was the, what was the difference between these two, right? Uh, obviously the traversal was different, but that's going to change every time we do this kind of thing. So what is the essential part of this kind of thing? Two functions. Two functions, right? 
Uh, so the step runner for the nil chain, or the is uh, colonless nil. And the inner wrapper is just identity. Cool. Uh, so we're going to define that uh, in a variable called nil chainer. And then for the list, the step runner was map cap, and the inner wrapper was list. Everyone with me so far? Uh, what do you mean by inner wrapper? Hey? What do you mean by inner wrapper? Uh, I mean return. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, the thing it's, that's called in the middle. Yeah, so the it's last, the like innermost say, function. Yeah. Yeah. The, sorry, the innermost value yeah. is being wrapped up right. uh, for, for list <coughs> in a list. Sorry, could you uh, go back one slide? I can okay. list the value in some order. Uh, so the list. Therefore, list. List. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. cool. <coughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, is anyone else puzzled? You look frowned. No, he was the only one. Because <laughs> 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 he's, he's too smart for my thoughts. He's like, oh, I need to map this back to fucking genius land. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll be dumb in your time. <coughs> Uh, okay, cool. So now we've got this. How do we do that like traversal thing? Uh, this is not how you do it, because this is retarded. Uh, but it's it's kind of it's the idea, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, a sequence of move. Just we're going to have a sequence of functions, right? Which is each of the steps down the chain of data, right? So that's going to be steps. Uh, the value, the starting value, is going to be. Uh, Colleen or Colin's clients, right? So the starting value has to be um, either a list for the list traversal or has to be a value that could be nil for the nil traversal. Um, and then we're going to have uh, this syntax is closure destructuring those maps to assign the values out into variables. Uh, so we're just pulling out the step runner and the inner wrapper. Cool. So we, when we call this function, we will pass in a we will pass in a chainer. I think that's what I call them. And a value and a list of steps, right? Uh, and then what we're going to do, right, is um, we're going to run those steps over uh, values that were computed by the last step, which for anyone familiar with higher order functions is reduce. Yeah? So is anyone here not comfortable with reduce? Because I'll go over it. No? All good. Okay. Uh, so this, the, the value here, right, is the second argument, not the first. Sorry about the gaps. Um, that's because more code is going to be coming in. Uh, so we're passing into reduce the function, the seed value, and the sequence. Right, so uh, reduce in close you would normally call with like uh, reduce plus zero and then a sequence of integers and that would sum them up. It's inject in Ruby or inject yeah, or reduce in Ruby. Fold, 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 fold. 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 Yeah. yeah, good. <laughs> uh, okay, so this this isn't actually going to work. Uh, the first problem is that the arguments to our step runner uh, the wrong order that closures version of reduce expects. So I'm going to define a function called flip, which just takes a function, returns a function, but flips the arguments. So uh, <coughs> a function that used to take a, b, will now take b, a, and still execute correctly. And this is flip. Uh, not very exciting. It takes a function, returns a lambda, where the function is applied to the reversed argument. Yeah. <laughs> cool? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what arity is that function? I'm confused. <laughs> the one. Yeah. It takes a single function. It takes a single argument, at least the one. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. What is the what is the arity of the function that it returns? Whatever. 
function of the arity of the function in its sense. <laughs> it doesn't actually it's return a function. Variable like, arity. Yeah, no, it actually yeah, doesn't. Uh, it doesn't return a function. It actually executes a function. So it, it, it was returns a, a function. No, it, 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 flip, it does function. Flip yeah. returns a function. Oh, yeah, 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 it's true. But the inside one, the yeah, high yeah. one doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's just the callback to our earlier uh, discussion. I don't think you can type that. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Good. Um, so, the, we still have the problem that we had with list, right? Where the innermost function uh, actually needed to be returning a list. So, uh, there's probably a few different ways you can do it. I'm just going to take that sequence of steps and wrap them, or wrap the last function in that sequence in the inner wrapper that we defined, right? So the last step in the chain with the investments, the last step was value, right? And instead of returning a list, which is what we need for mapcat, it returns just a number. Uh, so wrap last will change that function to instead return a list. Cool? This is the implementation of wrap last. Um, if you understand how it works, then it, the implementation doesn't really matter, right? Uh, it does what I say. So now that we have chain, we can do this, which I think is pretty cool. So this, this kind of looks like what we started at, like our most naive implementation that didn't actually work right. So we define what problem we're solving, right, whether it's nil, or uh, actually nil, right, in both cases here. Yeah. Uh, we start with our initial value, Colleen or Richard, and then we call a bunch of functions, uh, and at the end we get like a safe result, we get nil, this doesn't blow up. So that's cool, we've like, we've solved our problem. Um, and Using this isn't like 11 lines long, like it was in the beginning. So, win. But and is it slightly brittle to other things being lists when you're not expecting them to be lists? <coughs> or the other way around? This is dealing with nil, so it doesn't care about lists. <coughs> but don't, didn't you have to arbitrarily wrap things in lists and then, like, mapcat will undo lists? It seems like some accidents are happening. Oh, this is this for nil? But yeah, the other this one will be brittle. brittle. So, okay, ta-da, lists. So, uh, it is kind of arbitrary, right? But that's why we're pairing together those functions. Because we know that mapcat needs things to be lists. We've combined them together into uh, a new object that we know that we can perform chain on. But the point is, you have to know that it's list, 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 value. Yes. And if any other, it was list value, well, I don't know how list map list, it would break. Yeah, right. of course. Yeah, yeah, about that is this thing called types that were really useful then? No, no, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> it just breaks earlier. <laughs> we're going to create some sort of like Wild West modified monad, which will just like look at the thing. If it's not a list, it'll wrap it in a list. <laughs> it'll be awesome. We'll call it the Dynamo monad. <laughs> well, that's for this. I like it. Oh, you, you, you could just wrap everything in a list just for safety, because it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe two lists just for safety. It wouldn't work. 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 But like properly flattened, it's not just yeah. like this week, so you know, there might be some lists still there. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to yeah. totally destroy the list. There's anyone that says if it's not a list, make it one. Yeah. If it is a list, flatten it. Yeah, that's that's true. You could create a deep map cat. Yes, yeah. you could. Yes. We don't need it here though, so I did it. <laughs> so uh, back on track. <laughs> so this is our naive, except, uh, naive implementation that sucked it through null. Uh, this is the good one. They're about the same size. Win uh, onto lists. So I must say it's really nice. I mean, the, the end result is, is very, very nice, you know. It's mm. I like it. Yeah. Um, and <coughs> even cooler, like, th th this seems like mind blowingly cool to me is that we're using the same function, chain here, to solve a different problem. And they, the two problems seem like quite different uh, to me. It's like one's kind of creating this tree of values, the other one's just kind of being frustrating. Uh, 
But yeah, it's, it's the same thing, right? So we swap out the nil chainer for the list chainer. Our first value coming in has to be a list. So that's why we're calling clients directly on column. And then we go through the rest of the steps. And at the end of it, we get this result that's like what we wanted. Um, so compared to the original, it's, yeah, yeah, I remember it's somebody, actually kind of better, right? Yeah, I remember somebody many months ago who was like, who the hell is known as? Who, yeah, I yeah. remember that. I wonder who that was. <laughs> uh, good. So what? Part of this is actually about monads. Um, I said that there are class in the beginning, but I haven't shown you any classes. Closure doesn't have classes. It has records that are kind of similar, but we're just using a map, which is nice and lightweight. So this is the nil or maybe monad, uh, like asterisk. Uh, so this is like all that you really need to define. There are some rules. There's some other stuff. Who cares? It doesn't matter for your understanding. So it's, it's just two functions. We're just defining what these two standard functions are. And then we can use chain. And we can use other mo methods that are on the, on the maybe class, like do or fmap or whatever. And these are all like useful things. It's also nice that you can do it without using macros. You know, with tunes yeah, or, so you, yeah. you don't need macros exactly. to, do, cool. to, have, to derive some benefit from uh, these things, monads. You also don't need a lazy language, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. these are these are like immediately useful. Um, if you do have a lazy language or uh, sucky language extensions uh, or monad uh, macros, then you can get even more awesome syntax. But I'm not going to go into that. So this is like totally not threatening. Uh, this, the list, it's the same, not threatening. Um, so, like, hopefully you now kind of get monads, or two examples of them, at least. Uh, it's not super abstract, it's not scary. You know, given enough time to waste, you probably could have come up with this yourself. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Yay. Yay. James. Yeah, i got a question. The, the second one, is there a standard name for that? Is, oh. like, is it for, like, list monad or something? Or? Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the, the top one was called maybe. The second one in Clojure is called sequence. And in Haskell is called list. Yeah. Cool. Um, step runner is more commonly called bind. And totally, like, confusingly and unhelpfully, in a wrapper is normally called return. Um, so I chose to avoid those names for things that I think are maybe a bit more descriptive. Um, but yeah, uh, you, they're, they're, so if you read other things, if you want to read the burrito tutorial, you'll know what bind and return are. <laughs> is, is there a standard closure, like, I'm presuming there is a standard closure library that does something like this? There is. There's a closure library called um, algo.monads, like algorithms. Um, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it does some stuff with macros that I think is a bit unnecessary. Um, but yeah, it, it's got implementations of the common monads. Um, it's got a, a decent chunk of functions that are helpful. Um, you get syntax similar to let or for for uh, the do function. Uh, so the do function is kind of like chain, except you can assign a name to any intermediate value. So any <coughs> value produced by any step along the way, you can give a name to, and then reference in future steps. So this is like do in Haskell, basically. Yep, it's cool. Cool. exactly. Cool. Actually, yeah, redo, like for the ultimate Haskell nerds out there, the problems you solved earlier could have been done with applicatives. But uh, yeah, the ability to name things that have happened before and also branch on them, then you need monads. Yep. Um, and if you define two other functions that aren't used here, then you can also do cool like conditional stuff. So in closure, you get when and there's it's called guard in filter. Haskell. Yeah, guard in Haskell. Anyone else? Cool. I, oh, I, yeah, it's more like a closure kind of question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can run back a couple slides. Oh, how many? Is that possible? Uh, yeah, that's good. Good. One, no, no back. Plus one. Well, forward again. Plus forward. Okay, good. Back. So those keyword things, 
right? Yes. They're kind of like the selectors, but in Clojure, they're kind of magically functions. Yeah, so function... Are they really multi-methods? Function in Clojure yeah. is a protocol. So it's like uh, an interface in Java or a type class in okay. Haskell. So function, the function protocol is implemented by actual functions, mm -hmm. but it is also implemented by maps, which we saw right at the beginning. It's also implemented by keywords, which are these oh, things. Okay. So uh, you can, and, and like sets. So you can treat these values that you wouldn't normally think of as functions as functions, and then you get quite concise code. Yeah, I guess my main question is that if you had another sort of data structure which had a mother field in it, it would actually figure out which one it was when it got to it. Yes. Okay. Uh, as long as that data structure is associative. Okay. Yeah, you can use keywords look up on a set or on a map. Some sort of cube variable. Cool. Some sort of cube variable. Yeah. Okay. So but you could define anything if you want. Yes, you could make anything associative. Okay. Um, so there's nothing real special about keywords. They just are things that evaluate to themselves. Uh, uh, but they also act as a function on a map. Thank you. Oh, okay. Right, so right, so right. Right. Itself, but, like, but also, but functions are a protocol. They're the uh, protocol. <laughs> This is a soft question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. This is a soft question. How, how much do people actually use like monads in real closure? Like, is oh. it in the wild? So, actual monads, uh, like not at all, basically. But we use let all the time, which is basically the identity monad. The identity monad, for those of you that aren't familiar, is a monad defined that does nothing at each step, right? So it just passes the value along, and in the middle, it wraps it with um, nothing. Um, so let in closure, or let in all wisps, is essentially the do method, or do function, of the identity monad. And we use it just to give names to things, and then reference them later. For enclosure is essentially the list monad, and it's great for traversing collections like we saw here, or um, combining the results from multiple collections. Uh, so if you do like A takes values from 1, 2, 3, and B takes values from 4, 5, 6, then out of that you'll get called with all of the permutations of A and B, mm. uh, which we use a lot. Um, so monads don't just have to be for handling I.O. in pure languages. There was, there was a recent blog post where a guy actually used it in a, in a, there's a library called core.logic, which is like a logic programming library, and a guy used it, uh, used a monad within the library to make a parallel version of it, so he used a monad specifically for parallelizing the operation. That kind was of cool. pretty awesome. Yeah. I could definitely see uh, something like asynchronous programming. Uh, I could definitely see monads being really useful in closure. So it's literally just say, for example, uh, I want to download these 10 papers from 10 different websites. Yep. Literally, it's just by saying what you want. And then, so you know, uh, I don't think, so I've been thinking about that, right? I was thinking right. of, can we use monads to solve Node.js's like sucky callback situation? Yeah. Uh, and oh, Alex at the front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think you need to for a language like closure because you have futures. Yeah. So yeah. when you need yeah. the value, you just dereference yeah. it and then it'll block. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, the, there is a continuation monad. And in fact, <coughs> most like simple term rewriting procedures you'd come up with, like for example, turning a piece of code into continuation parsing style. So most of things like that can be implemented with monads. So, I, yeah. Yeah, I even saw a written article where, where someone actually showed that the, the uh, core to monad is the model of all monads because you can actually implement everything else with that. But I must admit, you know, I, I, I've been staring at the Haskell definition of the coin and I still don't get how it works. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, the, the continuation.